I will explain to you all advanced facts and strategies about Wingcraft loot running, which will make getting mythics easy. With these tactics and builds, you will be able to get rounds that have over 100 challenges with thousands of effective pulls. Let's start off with beacons. How rare each one is, how often they can appear, and general strategies for each one. The best beacon, which you unlock once you achieve loot running master division, is the rainbow beacon. This is a rare beacon, and after you've taken it one time, it will make all future beacons vibrant, which doubles their effect. With a ton of luck, you can get this with your normal two beacon limit. But the easiest way to get it to show is by having a bunch more beacons that show up which you get by taking orange beacons. Having more choices is also important later on, so you can choose good beacons. But be wary, as you are only able to take two orange beacons in your entire run, and after that, no more will show up. To get the most effect out of your two orange beacons, it would be perfect to get an orange one after having taken an aqua one, which doubles the effect of the next beacon. But don't waste your aqua beacons, because you can only get 10 of them each loot run, and they are insanely useful, especially vibrant ones, which triple the next beacon effect, which, as mentioned earlier, you will always get after having found the rainbow one. One special thing about aqua beacons is that they can only appear for two challenges in a row. The beacons that have no limit are yellow, which gives you extra loot, which you should almost never pick, blue, which gives you a power-up, known as a boon, and purple, that gives you a curse and an extra reward pull. The most important run out of these three for long runs is the blue one, which you will need to get a ton of if you want to do runs that go on over 100 challenges, because after each challenge, the mobs get stronger. But what effects are the best to get from the boons? First of all, getting some weakening enemy is important, because it reduces entity's damage after you hit them. This is hard capped at 50%, so just get up to that and nothing more. Next we have the extra damage, extra spell damage, and extra critical damage boons, which all increase your damage and therefore are important as mobs will later on get millions of HP. Because mobs get stronger, we also want to get some extra health. In my recent run, I got over 100,000 HP in total. So definitely get some of those boons. We also have extra skill point boons. Just try to get some of each so that you have all your skill point effects max, which will make you more damage resistant, allow you to cast more spells and deal more damage. Two other boons that are alright but a bit less important, assuming you have a good normal build, are mana region and walk speed, which you can take if there's no other good choice or you need it for your build. I would only recommend getting loot bonus and loot quality boons if you feel like you are easily killing everything. This will increase your chances to find a mythic in a random chest. But boon effects are not everything. Make sure that you take these effects with a good boon type. The best boon types are the ones that scale and multiply and are permanent. For example, Serendi Pity, which gives you the effect every time you open a chest, is better than Kill Streak, which only gives you the effect when you kill mobs. What about the purple beacons? When do you take them? Because they give you a curse and make mobs stronger, you should only start taking these once you have enough boons and you feel like the mobs are easy to kill. In my longest loot run yet, I ended up almost just taking purple ones after 100 challenges, giving me above 80 curses in total from around 40 vibrant purples. Let's talk about three valuable beacons, starting off with the white one. The white one can only be grabbed once in your loot run, but can of course appear multiple times as long as you don't take it. It gives you 5 extra challenges for your loot run on default, which by itself would not be much. But remember aqua beacons, which double the effect of the next one? If you get two aquas after each other, which is easy to get if you have many beacon choices, and then take a white, you will get 15 extra challenges. Which still isn't a ton. But if all of these beacons are vibrant, then you get 50 extra challenges. One thing to keep in mind is that the aquas can only appear twice in a row. So the aqua should not have been an option to take before you take your first aqua. In a loot running mod that I made, it shows you if it's a good time to take an aqua. If it's green, then you can get another aqua after it. But if it's red, then you better wait until later. Another beacon which you can only take once like the white one is the grey beacon, which gives you an additional reroll in the end, which means you will have a way higher chance to get a mythic. Here the word effective poles also come in, which are your poles plus your poles multiplied by your rerolls which is how many actual pulls you have if you end up using all your rerolls. This cannot be seen in Winecraft directly, but with my loot running mod, which is in the description, you can do slash loot run stats to see your current pulls and your current effective pulls whenever you want. The grey one, just as with the white beacon, you want to aqua stack into it. With two vibrant aquas and then a vibrant grey, you get 10 rerolls. When you can start aqua stacking for this, however, is even more complicated compared to the white one, 
because the grey beacon only appears each second challenge. Which means that if you have a lot of beacon choices, you want to start your Arcos day when the grey beacon is there as well. So when the indicator is green and the grey shoots up, it's the right time. A third beacon which you can only get one of is the dark grey, which gives you 5 extra poles and 3 curses. You also want to aqua stack into this for the perfect run. Having 2 vibrant aquas and a vibrant dark grey gives you 50 extra poles, but also 30 curses. So I recommend getting this right at the end of your run and saving 2 out of your 10 aquas for it. Only two beacons remain which you want to use together. These are the red and green ones. Let's start with red, which gives you two additional challenges by default. But be warned, as these challenges will not give you extra time like you get from normal challenges or challenges from the white beacon. When you take a red beacon, these no time challenges happen immediately instead of being added up at the end. So the best way to use red ones is to first get your time up high by doing challenges and then walk into red one to increase your total loot run challenges while still chilling on time. I recommend using the rest of your 10 aqua beacons that you did not use for the white, grey and dark grey or orange to go into red ones. But be wary, only take one red at a time, wait until you finish all the challenges from it, then get your time back up and first then you should take another red. Here it is important to track how many red beacons you currently have left before you get more time. For this, I made my loot running mod add an indicator to your scoreboard that shows you how many more you need to do before you can get more time. In case you do need some more time, which you sometimes do if you use an aqua into a red which will give you 12 challenges, you can pick up a green beacon which gives you additional time. Another upside of the green beacon is that they do not contribute to the mob scaling meaning they won't make the next challenge harder like all other beacons do. They, like red beacons, are limited to 10. Because of the limit for each of the beacons, especially aqua, red and green, it is important to keep track of how many beacons of each you currently have taken. For this, you can use my mod, which you can find in the description, or use something called the windhills function, which you can find by opening your quest book, going to configuration, and pasting this thing, which will be in the description. Keep in mind that with the windhills way, you will not get the aqua indicator in there. Now let's talk about a strategy known as loot run resetting. The extreme way to do loot run resetting, which is what I like to do, is starting a loot run, See if you get a rainbow on first, and if you don't, just immediately cancel it and try again in 10 minutes. This is very extreme, as you will only get a rainbow one somewhere around 1% of the times you start a loot run. A less extreme way is to try doing a few challenges, and if no good beacon show up in around the first 5, you just reset and try again. This, because getting a rainbow beacon and then some vibrant oranges early on is almost a necessity for long runs. Okay, now that we know all the mechanics, what class should you use? Let's rank them from worst to best. I'd say the worst shaman, because it is slow at moving around, but if you really want to play on it, an Olympic build is probably your best option. I will in the description leave a link to someone who did a 74 challenge loot run with this. Archer is also not the best for loot running, as it doesn't do the best AoE damage. But getting a Stradi build is alright, because you will move around quite quickly with it. I will leave one build in the description. On the third place for loot running, we have Assassin, which does not offer the best movement, but it does great damage. I would recommend an Acrobat Nirvana build, or even perhaps a Cataclysm Nirvana dual wheel build. In the dual wheel build, you start off with your Nirvana, and later, once you got some boons, you can switch to your Kata to do insane damage. Solid class of loot running is Mage, especially with Warp, which allows you to move around fast because of the negative teleport cost and does quite good damage. In combat, just cast Meteors and some Ice Snakes, then use your Arcane Transfer once your mana bank is filled up, which will cast your last 5 spells for free and give you even more mana, meaning you do great damage. My personal favorite class of loot running is Warrior, especially with an Idol. You can move around really fast, you're quite tanky and do quite good damage from your flying kick by just spamming charge and staying above the enemies. You want to use your uppercut on enemies so that they take more damage and then use your bash and war scream as well to get the boots that I give. Otherwise just spam charge to deal damage and try to stay in the air as much as you can. And if you should ever get low on health, just pull out the rhythm of the seasons and spam charge a little bit and you'll be back to health in no time. In the description I will have a link to a 143 challenge loot run with warrior that I did recently. And also check out this video to get even better at Windcraft.